What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I'm a gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and other gut issues so they can look and feel their best. Over the past few months, I've gotten a bunch of comments requesting more info in videos on CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, as well as conditions such as candida. Candida is the most common fungus found in the human body and is very frequently the cause of fungal overgrowths and infections. If there's too much candida in the small intestines, it can cause CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth. It is also possible to have both SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth at the same time. That's what this video is going to be about today, is what I would do to treat both of these conditions at the same time. Let's go. But let's first look at the treatments that we know can work for SIBO. Current treatments we have one, antibiotics, two, elements mental diet, three, potentially the carnivore diet, and then four, antimicrobial herbs. Now that we know what works for SIBO, let's talk about each one of these individually and see if they actually work for CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth as well. First up is antibiotics. This is not going to be a good choice. Antibiotics treat bacteria, but they're not going to be helpful for fungal infections. In fact, they can even lead to more fungal infections because they throw off the balance of how much bacteria and fungi exist at the same time. Second is the elemental diet. Elemental diet is a a high sugar diet and fungi love sugar. So from a surface value, it seems like a really bad idea. On the other hand, with the elemental diet, most of the nutrients get absorbed all in the first meter or few feet of the small intestine. So theoretically, you may be starving the fungi that exist later on in the small intestine. Regardless, I could not find a single study that looked at the elemental diet and treatment for CFO, candida, or fungal infections. Therefore, due to the lack of data and research, I would not recommend using this approach. Third option is the carnivore diet, and the carnivore diet is actually a zero sugar, zero carbohydrate diet. Other diets that are typically used for candida or fungi, they're usually all low sugar diets, low carbohydrate diets. So in theory, you'd think doing it would help with some of the symptoms of CFO. I only found one single study looking at anything remotely similar to this topic that we're looking at today. And this patient didn't actually have CFO. She actually had a fungal vaginal infection, not the same thing. While the carnivore diet did work for this one person. This is just one person in one study, so I don't think we can really extrapolate this and make assumptions based on this one person that it would work for CFO. I think there may be potential to this diet as a treatment somewhere down the line, but until we see more data and research, I don't really think this is a treatment that we should be trusting for this purpose. And number four, the last option is antimicrobial herbs. I consider these to be the best option for treating both CFO and CBO at the same time. And there is a ton of data that show that antimicrobial antimicrobial herbs can be effective in treating bacteria and fungi. And one more point I'd like to make about fungal treatment is there's a lot of standard antifungal prescription medications such as fluconazole that we're actually noticing that fungi are becoming resistant to these treatments. So there is a developing need to look at more and different types of treatment for fungal infections and therefore I think antimicrobial herbs can be an option that we can utilize more in the future. I'll spend the rest of this video discussing a few antimicrobial herb options that you may be able to use to treat SIBO and CFO at the same time with. They are one, oil of oregano, two, berberine, three, allicin, A-L-L-I-C-I-N. The first one is oregano or oregano oil. It's the same thing. This 2017 study looked at the antibacterial and antifungal activity of six products, including oregano, thyme, clove, lavender, clary sage, and arbor vitae. And this study showed that OR, which is oregano, exhibited important fungicidal activity against all strains tested. Fungicidal basically means that the product actually eliminates the fungi species. And the results in the study showed the six herbs used not to be harmful for human cells or the DNA, which the title of this article kind of suggests that this may be an issue. So just confirming that it was not in this particular study. Another study on oregano, this 2021 study by the German Journal of Natural Research looked at oregano as well. Oregano essential oil inhibits its candida biofilms. If you're not familiar with what biofilm is, it's basically a protective layer formed out of carbohydrates and proteins that bacteria and fungi use in order to protect themselves. So being able to inhibit this biofilm formation is a very good characteristic of an agent that we're hoping to use for treatment of bacterial or fungal infections. And oregano seems to do that according to this study, indicating, quote, the antifungal activities of some essential oils were invested 
investigated against candida and among them oregano oil was found to be the most effective oil and further biofilm studies were conducted with it. Oregano oil inhibited biofilm adhesion formation of candida. This basically means that the candida were not able to safely find a home under this biofilm and mature biofilms and also displayed the ability to reduce biofilm formation when they were allowed to form on surfaces previously coated with oil. So again, very supportive in terms of using oregano oil as an antifungal. Now moving on to berberine. This 2016 study from the Antimicrobial Agents and Chemotherapy Journal looked at how well berberine worked against yeast such as candida that fluconazole was actually unable to treat. And for the results of the study, it indicates, quote, berberine has antifungal activity against fluconazole resistant candida and cryptococcus neoformans strains. According to some studies, berberine showed significant antifungal activity against candida strains, which was consistent with the findings of this study. And then last point on the study, it also indicates that berberine may also be able to reduce the viability of biofilms formed by fluconazole resistant candida tropicalis cells. Moving on to the third antimicrobial herb, which is allicin. This 2020 study from the Journal of Applied Sciences looked at how well allicin worked against fungi. Allicin is actually a compound that is released from garlic cloves when they are crushed. And I found this point pretty interesting in the study. A 50 gram of garlic bulb, so 50 grams of garlic or like 1.6 ounces, can yield a approximately 100 milligrams of allicin, which is quite a bit. And then the study goes on to say, overall the results obtained as part of this study indicate the remarkable antifungal activities of allicin against fungi. A strong concentration dependent growth inhibition of fungi was observed. And then finally, the last study I have today is this 2005 study from the Antimicrobial Agents and Chemotherapy Journal, which looked at how well allicin treats candida albicans biofilms. The activity of FGE, which is fresh garlic like extract, meaning using the allicin with it against candida albicans in its planktonic, adherent, and sessile phases. Planktonic means that the candida species are free flowing and they're not inside any biofilms. Adherent means that some of the fungi are starting to adhere to the biofilms. And then the sessile means that these biofilms are fully formed. So regardless if they're free flowing, starting to form on biofilm or fully formed biofilm, it still works according to this study. This is just a small sliver of the many studies regarding these antimicrobials that indicate you may be able to use them both for bacterial and fungal purposes. To summarize, if you have SIBO and CIFO infection at the same time, I'd recommend using an herbal antimicrobial approach. The three agents that we talked about which can potentially be good options include oil of oregano, berberine, and allicin. Oregano and berberine are intended more for the hydrogen component of SIBO and allicin is intended more for an intestinal methanogen overgrowth. Carnivore diet may show to be effective for this purpose somewhere down the line when more research and data is done, but I don't think we can make that assumption at this time. And finally, I would not recommend using antibiotics or the elemental diet for treating both SIBO and CIFO simultaneously. That is all for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Please leave any suggestions or comments you have on my video down below in the chat thread. And if you're new to my channel, I post a new full-length video every Monday evening in YouTube shorts throughout the week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.